Hi everyone, this is Konzel here. So we finally have the Shenhe Math Guide 4 video ready. Basically, it's a Ayaka freeze comb with Shenhe buffs thrown in. Uh, the Miss Splitter Reforge, which is Ayaka's VIS weapon, will be usable for the math. And let's look at what I'm going to cover here in this video. So basically, we'll talk about Ayaka Inventive Stats. We'll talk about Ayaka freeze comb with Shenhe in the comb, the rotation. The damage buff with or without trigger quota. Yeah, the new name for her buff stats is trigger quota. And Venti, although I have this section here, I'm not going to run through in detail because I already have gone through the exact same details in Shenhe Math Guide 3 when we were doing it for the Gun Freeze Comp. So I'm not going to run through this in detail, but I'll include it in the uh, TLDR and this section 5 here. Where we talk about Sunhurst buff to freeze comp. We bring them bring all the figures together to look at. And then we will have a TLDR, we'll talk about single target, multiple targets, and some points to consider. And obviously in the next video, what we're gonna talk about. So I'm gonna try to go as fast as possible for this Ayaka freeze comp video so that we don't take uh, so that the video doesn't go on too long, right? So the Ayaka inventive stats are based on my actual characters since we are just focusing on buff effects here. Ayaka stats 1829 attack for the 6.6 .6 base CR and this 101.6% before this blizzard and cry resonance is a bit, I know it's a bit overkill. And 217.2 crit damage, so it's more than 200 crit damage thanks to miss splitter. Crit build venting, we have 1660 attack, 51 CR, 159 CD, 153 ER with stringless. So yeah, my Ayaka stats can be much better, but their domain is cursed for me. Both the Hydro and Cryo artifacts. Also the reason why my child is using 4 Pishime, Sinchu Emblem, Gan Yu only using 2 Place of Blizzard because my other pieces are just better. Okay? So, let's talk about Ayaka Freeze Comp. Ayaka's burst has 19 instances of cutting damage followed by 1 final bloom damage, that's 20 hits against a single target. So let's make that clear first. Ideally, you want to be doing a combo like this, dash, M1, since miss splitter, cast a burst, cast your skill, Q, E, do about 3 S and 2 C or N3 C if you're using Sinchu. So other than burst, if you look at this combo, other than burst, Ayaka actually has quite a few cryo damage instances that will consume Senhurst trigger quota. So before I continue further, let's set the baseline understanding first. Okay, it doesn't really matter which cryo damage from Ayaka consumes a trigger quota, since the damage bar from Senhe wouldn't differ based on attacks. Other than different bonuses between Alice skill slash burst or NACA, which is really not that big of a difference unless you're using R5 of a weapon to boost one of these types specifically. So I took a quick look through the swords and only Black Sword falls into this category. And you shouldn't be using Black Sword on Ayaka to begin with because that's overkill on the CR. The CR starts step from Black Sword. Now I'm also aware that her A1 passive gives you 30% NACA after casting E. But if you look at the rotation, you don't really have a chance to utilize to have this utilize the trigger quota. The burst will likely consume the trigger quota faster than you can reach the NA or at least the CA portion. And I'll talk more about that in the rotation later. Now, all of this also means that it's a good thing if we consume her trigger quota ASAP for more DPS, correct? Because it doesn't matter that you are trigger consuming the trigger quota on the M1 or the skill or the 3 SN2C, etc. Because you just deal the up damage upfront ASAP. This also means that Ayaka C2 is good for this purpose. Right? Because she gets two small little spinning snowflake thingy on one on each side of her main. And that helps you to trigger more cryo damage instances and more of a trigger quota gets consumed is even earlier. Right? Now the second point, I've covered this in the Gun with Freeze Comp, but I'll reiterate here. Shenhe is meant to buff your damage in a bursty manner, okay? In waves of surging damage, which means that after the first wave of mods are cleared by the crazily buff damage, you can use Shenhe's skill again with Ayaka's second or Ayaka's first E after casting Q. Now, why do I mention this? Is because Ayaka's E is then second cooldown, so her E press is then second cooldown. We want to align them. Okay. Also, the reason why you get lesser time from her passive, where you get a thirty percent damage boost, instead of using your NACA, you will actually sw be switching to Shen her to cast her E. So you, you lose a bit of time on that. But we want to align their E. Okay. So this is a rotation in Ayaka Shen her plus Hydro plus Animal Comb. 
I'll use Venti as animal and Kokomi as hydro in this video. The typical hydro plus animal options for her still apply. I'm not going to go into those because uh, that would be way too long for the video. Now, rotation in game is tested right now using Cell to simulate Shen he, since his E dashes like Shen He's press E and he has a both cooldown are on 10 seconds. Okay. Now, I'm aware that there's an animal resonance in this test call where I use Venti and Cell together. Providing a 5% cooldown reduction, but 5% of 10 seconds is only 0 0.5 seconds. And if you're not convinced that it doesn't matter, I also use Raiden E to test instead of Cell. And it works, it's still ready, the 10 second cooldown is still ready. Okay, so it doesn't, the animal resonance doesn't matter, the test is accurate. So the rotation will be Sunhe Q, followed by Sunhe E press, followed by Venti E Q, Elemental Skill Burst, Kokomi E, Ayaka D, M1 Q E, standard combo. But instead of doing a dash and N2C combo after using her elemental skill, we are switching to Shen He to cast her E again so that you can apply a second second wave of trigger quota onto her burst because her burst will still be active here. Okay, after you do your QE, your burst will be active because her burst is active for 5 seconds. Now, if you see one, you have different options, you can do a Shen He E hole. Or you can do a alternate rotation, which I'll talk about later. Mm, basically, you'll be not you, you will not be using hole in the alternate rotation. The reason why we want to use hole, we might want to use hole here, is for the fifteen percent NACA bonus that applies to her N2C combo. The rest of this is really just doing the necessary actions until you gain your energy back for Sunhe Q. Because by the time you finish your second Ayaka E, if you align your Ayaka E and your Shenhe E, you will be ready to cast your Shenhe Q. Okay? Now I know that this combo may look like you are not getting energy particles on your Ayaka after pressing E. But like I said, the reason is we want to align the cooldown. But let's say if you are, uh, for some reason your ER is not enough, you want your Ayaka to be the one receiving the particles, you can. It's just a one second gap between their E press in that scenario. So it's not too bad. Now, ideally we want to cast Sunhe E press before Sunhe Q here. This is what we did for, I mean the reverse was what we did for Gan Yu. We did E press before Gan Yu, before Sunhe Q for Gan Yu in freeze comp. But the timing on Ayaka rotation does not allow. If you cast Sunhe's E before Q, the E buff will expire by the time Ayaka finishes her, her cast animation for her burst and before she hits anything. The reason why is because Ayaka is at the end of the setup phase of the rotation, whereas Gan Yu is actually here, right after Sun He, we use Gan Yu, we cast Gan Yu burst in the Gan Yu freeze comp, as opposed to Ayaka freeze comp where you only cast it after the animal and hydro. Which is perfectly understandable because of how Ayaka works. So what this also means is that we will have to sacrifice the Sun He E buff, or at least the 15% bonus on Sun He Q. Okay? Uh, it's not ideal to lose some time on the 6 seconds bar from a passive after casting E, which is this portion here, but like I said, we want to ensure that Shenhe E is cast on cooldown, so that you beautifully maintain your 20 second rotation, as well as Ayaka for the 20 second rotation. Okay, so Shenhe E hold can be used after your Ayaka D 2S and 2S and 2C, so instead of using it in a row, you use it separately. This is if you want to let Ayaka gain energy from Sunhe in second E press, or if the Sunhe E hole will not provide energy until Sunhe E press energy particles are gained. If you use Sin Chu with if you have used Sin Chu with sacrificial sword, you know what I mean here. Basically, the sacrificial sword effect on uh, Sin Chu. If it triggers and you cast your second E before you regain the particles from your first E, your second E is not going to give you any particles. That's how it works for Sin Chu. But if it works differently for Shenhe, then that would be great because in the first place, the Sin Chiu is a bit different. It's based on sacrificial weapon effect, whereas the Ayaka or rather Shenhe is based on charges. So for charges, you should get your particles. Now, holding... No, okay, I shouldn't use the word holding. Delaying your, sec your last Shenhe E here also helps with your C6 rotation because your C6 Shenhe, you want to use the Shenhe E after Ayaka burst is over. Whether to use E, hold or press really is up to you. Whether you want to yeah, whether you're willing to give up the 15% CA and A bonus from her passive, so her passive. But obviously using press will be better for your rotation overall. And that's what I want to talk about next in the C1 alternate rotation. Where basically 
you can simplify things at C1, Shenhe, C1, by using two S press each time in the rotation above when press is used. So instead of using one E press and one hole, you use two S E here, E press, and you also use two S E press here. But this is very dependent on a few things, not just a couple, sorry, a few things. So first off, like I said, using the skill continuously in a hole, in a row, still generates particle issues. B would be uh, that the stacking is allowed for your tri trigger quota. So when you're using two of Shenhe's E in a row, there can be two scenarios that happen. One is your trigger quota gets added, 5 plus 5, if you're using two E press, and that gives you a total of 10. But it can have a stupid design. I mean, I can't rule it out. There may be a stupid design where instead of doing a 5 plus 5, all it does is refreshes whatever remaining number back to 5. Now, this needs to be tested to be sure, but it's kind of weird if it doesn't increase the trigger quota to 10 because of her C4 effect. She has a effect on her C4 that allows her to gain up to a cap of 50 C4 mantra stats that is gained every time the trigger quota is consumed. So imagine across your entire cryo team, if you are not allowed to increase the trigger quota, all it does is refreshing the cap, you will essentially never have a scenario where your C4 mantra stats will hit a 50 cap, not even with 4 cryo characters. Because the way the C4 mantra stats work is that they will be consumed immediately once you use your E. So how the hell am I supposed to be able to hit a 50 cap? If Mihoyo designs it such that it doesn't increase the trigger quota to 10 and instead refreshes it to 5 when you use the 2 charges continuously. So I do believe that it should work in terms of stackable. It should be increasing it to 10. But we won't know until we have a chance to test it out when Shenhe is live. Okay? But if Mihoyo really designed it to be refreshed to 5, then they are basically screwing themselves over with a design that is contradicting her C4. Just doesn't make sense to me. And also the third condition here is that if you want to do this alternate rotation, you must be willing to drop the 15% P NAPACA bonus from Sir passive for her e hole. Okay, so if all of these conditions are fulfilled, the rotation will be as such. Basically, like I said, what happened, the difference is that whenever you use your Shenhe E, you use it twice. That's it. And this will result in a very nice rotation where you get more trigger quotas, everything is aligned beautifully in terms of the rotation and you get more energy particles as well. So this is very nice if, it, if all these conditions are met. I'm kind of hopeful that they are and I've already explained why. But one thing to note is that for C6 Shen He, uh, if you do this rotation, depending on your number of enemies, while your burst is still uh, at the last few, last one to two seconds of your burst, depending on the number of enemies, we can't be sure whether or not you will have trigger quota left for your C6 Shen He until we test it out. But likely, hood is should be yes, because you need to switch to Shen He, you need to cast her E twice, you need to wait for the... Oh, so that's the trigger quota, right? Okay, so you need to cast your E twice. So the burst may or may not be re finished by then, and even if it has finished, maybe some mods have died, etc. So very fluid here, but generally speaking, for C6, you would want to try to delay your second or your last E to until the burst is over, generally speaking. All right. Alright, so that covers the rotation, the mechanics, etc. Now let's talk about the math. Let's look at the figures. We have the Shenhe bar figures. Okay, with or without trigger quota. For Venti, I won't cover later. Uh, for Venti, I really won't cover because we have already been done already. Alright, so let's look at the bar figures. Uh, it's a whole long stretch because I tried dividing into smaller sections and my Excel kept hemming on me. So. And it was frustrating because I had to re-record again and again. Although I could do video editing, but uh, it's easier for me to just record over, honestly speaking. Alright, so here is it. This is for your normal attack, level 9 normal attack, without buff, buff with buff. As you go from C0 to C2, gradually. This is the type of damage figures you'll be expecting. It's quite a big boost. Because her normal attack talent multipliers are low. It's lower than uh, Ganyu's 
charge attacks. And some of it is even lower than Ganyu's, uh, what do you call that? Uh, burst icicle damage. Okay, so these are the percentage figures. So for the purpose of my analysis, I'll just refer to the full attack buffer build with ER sense, which has about, about 170 plus ER. 170. Let's see. 174 ER. Okay, so this is the build. Percentage wise, we are looking at 189.4% to 239.4% with R1 Calamity and Miss Blitzer. Pretty decent. Next, we have the Elemental Skill. Elemental Skill, very likely that you will trigger, consume, consider trigger quota. For the NA, NA talent, not necessarily. Depending on whether you have C2 Shenhe. So, Elemental Skill is here. With Elemental Skill having the highest damage multiplier, obviously it has the lowest percentage buff from Shenhe. Okay, 74 to 93. And then you have the Burst, the level 9 Burst, and the percentage differences. Level 12 bursts and the percentage differences. Okay, so if you want to look at how the other builds fare, these are the figures. You can pause the video anytime when I'm going through the video. I'm not going to go through every single build, we'll just focus on this e full attack buffer with ER sense. Alright, so I have not included, just bear in mind, I have not included Ayaka C2 here so as to reduce number rows in the table, but essentially, percentage wise, the two smaller Seki Notos will get an even bigger boost since the buff damage figure doesn't change, but the Ayaka damage is 20% of your main Seki Noto. Okay? As expected, Ayaka's normal attack has the biggest percentage boost, 189 to 239%, since we showed that earlier, then 74 to 93% on elemental skill, 101 to 124% for level 9 burst. 85 to 107 percent for level 12 burst, which is expected because your talent multiplier increases when you go from 9 to 12 past the percentage buff, relative percentage buff from Shenhe is lowered. But just bear in mind that the, the actual buff damage figures from Shenhe, excluding Ayaka herself, are the same, other than a 30 percent AC bonus from Ayaka A1 Penasif. So given the rotation shared earlier, mobs will be gathered before Ayaka unleashes her burst, so we can assume that the trigger quota will be consumed shortly after cast, i.e. mostly on burst. Maybe you have a few 1 to 2 on elemental skill if you have lesser mobs remaining. And an end to C if you have single target and C2, sorry, I should say C2. C2 Shenhe. So this means for level 9 Ayaka burst, we can expect a good momentary boost of 101 to 124% for the first 5 or 10 if you use 2 as press and start with C1 Shenhe. Trigger quota within the first wave. And when the rotation reaches the C0 Shenhe to cast the elemental skill again, which is basically right after you cast your elemental burst and skill, you cast your C0 Shenhe elemental skill again, your burst is going to get the another 5 to 10 trigger quota depending on whether you have C0 or C1 Shenhe with this amount of boost. So you still get a fairly fairly decent amount of boost, right? Against a single target, in fact, if you have C1, you are actually getting boost on every single tick, if you think about it. So it's very nice. It's a very nice and substantial damage boost. I shouldn't even use the word substantial, it's a significant damage boost. So for C0, then trigger quota is confirmed for the rotation. Even if you have C0, you still can get 10 trigger quota, not just 5, because if you follow my rotation, you are essentially going to cast your second Shenhe trigger or your second E to give you 5 trigger quota while your Ayaka burst is still active. Okay? You get 10 trigger quota, not just 5. For C1, it will be 17 to 20, depending on whether you are using a whole, depending on whether you are using the 4 express that I talked about. So basically, depending on whether the main rotation or alternate rotation is used. For C6, you would you save one char one charge of okay, I shouldn't say whole E, one charge of E to use after Ayaka burst ends, so as to utilize the C6 effect. If you use whole, then you get a 15% bonus. If you use during her burst, trigger quota will be gone and C6 can't work. But if you use it during the last one second of her burst, theoretically you should have enough trigger quota left unless you are that one last that last one second of burst, you still have five enemies there. Unlikely based on how Ayaka's damage is so far. So theoretically speaking, a C6 Shenhe 
may not have to use the one whole E, you can just use the alternate rotation, but that needs to be tested. Okay? So in terms of damage figures, the actual damage figures, uh, oh, actually not that, it's actual, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. It is the actual damage figure because crit rate is 100% on Ayaka. So it's a difference of 160k to 465k, going from C0, C5, Shenhe, in total. Obviously, if you have more than one enemy, we need to divide this damage, but against a single target, just buffing Ayaka alone, giving you extra 160k to 465k is very, very good. Okay, it's if it's against five enemies, it's about thirty two k to ninety three k each. This boost is actually double of Ganyu's because Miss Splitter gives damage bonus, but Emus doesn't for her burst anyway. Also, Ayaka has more damage percentage bonuses from her passives, right? So these figures are really not too bad. They are actually pretty pretty good. But remember, they are also added on top of your existing Ayaka's damage, so it's a boost of more than hundred percent. So it's really a burst of surge in DPS, in DPS. And moreover, Senna is still able to buff even without Trigger Quota. So let's look at her buffs without Trigger Quota. Now for Senna itself, it's not that significant. For, or rather for Ayaka itself, it's not that significant. It's only 6 to 12%. Now let's talk about why. The buffs that Senna provides without Trigger Quota at C0 is 6%, 12% at C5 or level 10 burst. So this is very low compared to the 26% of Ganyu. And this is because of diminishing returns from Ayaka's damage bonuses. Remember, Ayaka is using Miss Splitter here. We do have quite a number of damage bonuses. Okay? So if your Ayaka is not using Miss Splitter, the buff from Senhe without Trigger Quota should contribute a better percentage that's much closer to Ganyu's 26%. Just bear that in mind. Now, I have to talk about an unfortunate situation here where Ayaka's burst is cast at the end of the setup unlike Ganyu is which is mid of the setup. You run into a situation where C0 Senhe's burst will end halfway through Ayaka's burst. Yep, I did the simulation the, and the calculation. The C0 Senhe burst will end halfway through your Ayaka's burst. What this means is that while your damage bonus snapshots your resistance threat from Senhe's burst is not. So there will be some loss of buffs. Although ironically on the Miss Splitter, since it's low to begin with, it's not that bad, right? <laughs> anyway, C2 Senhe will grant full buffs for Ayaka's burst, and some of the N2C as well, since it's plus 8 seconds. So what I'm trying to say here is that for a... If you are, if you are going to talk about Senhe's buff without trigger quota, at least for the Ayaka Freeze Comb, C2 Shenhe has a lot of value compared to Ganyu's because for Ganyu, you are only losing out on about 3 to 4 seconds downtime where you don't have her burst together with uh, Ganyu's burst. Shenhe burst together with Ganyu's burst. But for Ayaka, because of how the rotation works, you don't really gain it and you don't really gain any of her burst uh, buff unless you have C2 Shenhe, especially your N2C combos. Because the burst can new snapshot, the damage bonuses, the N2C will not. Resistance shed will always not be snapshot. So yeah, there's always this loss of buff involved if you're not having C2 Shenhe, which is kind of bad news for C0 Shenhe players. But it's fine, right? Because percentage is not that high. And more importantly, while this is a nice boost to have, the main big boost is still on the trigger quota. Okay, Trigger Quota still gives you the main big boost. Okay, so more importantly, Shenhe doesn't just buff Ganyu, but Venti's Cryo Infuse Burst as well as her own burst as well. But since I've gone through Venti's figures previously in Sir Math Guide 3, I will not cover the details here. We'll jump straight to this session here where we'll talk about Shenhe's buff to Freeze Comp. Okay, so Excluding Shenhe buff to her own burst, which is her own damage to begin with, which is why her talent multipliers are low, because Mihoyo already factored in that she will buff her own burst. Okay, before you start trashing the character, just because he has a low talent multiplier, understand how the character works, yeah? Okay, so trigger quota buff to Ayaka. I just covered this earlier, so it's about 160k to 144 sorry, 160k to 465k. If you divide it against five enemies, is okay. Sorry, this is outdated. Oh my god, my bad, my bad. I changed it in the wrong area. I changed it in the venti area. 
my bad, my bad. Okay, so 32k to 93k. This is the one where it's about 18 or 19k to this amount here. 194 divided by 20 is so about 40k. Okay, there about. It's more closer to 39k though. Okay. Okay, let me just change the music because we may have some copyright issues here. Okay, so. Ah, hang on. So these are the damage figures that you will see for Venti and Ayaka. Obviously the Ayaka buff uh, is really really nice because of Ayaka's bonuses. 32k to 93k and you have 18 to 39k for Venti. So total is about 247k to 169k. Sorry, to 659k. Uh, the figures here are a bit estimated so don't come and come at me with a pitch fault saying that some of the figures are wrong because I made a mistake here. But this portion is correct, okay? This portion is correct. Okay, then in that case, I just changed this to 17. Okay. So we have 247k to 659k in total. C0 to C5 shouldn't hurt. Okay, one enemy. That's a lot of damage, by the way. 659k. But that is a C5 shouldn't hurt, so. If against 5 enemies, it's about 49k to 139k each, sorry, 131k each. Percentage-wise, it's 101% to 124% for Ayaka and 759% to 988% for Venti when the trigger quota is active. And bear in mind, this is just from trigger quota, there's still a 6 to 12% buff for Ayaka and 14 to 26 for Venti for all remaining damage from other buffs. Which is the NECA bonus, skill burst bonus, cryo bonus, cryo resistance check, cryo crit damage. Although given Ayaka's rotation, you will need C2 Shenhe to fully utilize the 6 to 12% buff. buff. Okay. Now the figures are starting to look really good, especially considering it allows Freeze Comb to get a huge surge in DPS against enemy waves, right? This is even bigger than um, Ganyu. Now, if you have used Freeze Comb before, you know what I mean, especially when your Venti burst is still active, first wave of enemies are clear, second wave spawn, and they, they get put into Venti's burst while your Cryo damage is still there. Cryo burst is still there. That's how one rotation can clear up to two waves. So with Shenhe's buff, you should be able to clear first wave almost immediately, second wave as well, and potentially have three waves clear with one rotation. Okay, this portion is basically the same as Ganyu and... I mean, same as the Ganyu Freeze Comb. So I don't want to talk too much about this. Basically, you get a burst DPS in the Freeze Comb, and you clear more waves. Okay? So, TLDR. Let's talk about the TLDR. Okay. Uh, just the Shenhe buff trigger quota alone in Freeze Comb offers a pretty good damage boost for gun in Freeze Comb than figures. <laughs> like I said, Ayaka Freeze Comb figures wise and if you look at it percentage wise it's actually very incredible when your trigger quota is active 101 to 124 percent boost for ayaka 759 to 98 percent for venti so effectively ayaka's burst damage is multiplied by around 2 to 2.82x for 10 to 17 or 20 instances c0 c1 while venti's infusion damage is multiplied by 8.5 to 11x for the same number of instances okay so against a single target, Shenhe greatly increases the freeze comb damage, offering up to 659k of damage. And that's C5. If you have a C6, it's going to be a lot more than this because you are able to fire off your N2Cs without consuming the trigger quota and yet still have the trigger quota. Okay, this is just up to C5. If you include C6, it's going to be even higher for a single target. Significantly higher for a single target. Every N2C combo is about 200k with Shenhe's buff so imagine the number of N2C that you're going to be doing is quite a bit of damage it's probably going to hit more than a million here this figure if you have C6 Shenhe for Ayaka only for Ganyu you know and I'll talk more about that in the some points to consider so Venti has 16 infusion ticks Ayaka has 19 cutting ticks plus 1 bloom with this in mind C0 Shenhe basically buff 10 ticks which is 62% of Venti's cryo infusion for Ayaka, <laughs> for Ayaka, C0 Shenhe buffs 50% of Ayaka's burst, right? Because 10 ticks out of 20 against a single target. C1 plus Shenhe buffs 17 slash 20 ticks, depending on which rotation can work. 
which rotation we are talking about the mean of the alternate. So it's hundred percent of venti cryo infusion, and for Ayaka, it's eighty five to hundred percent of her burst. So very nice against a single target. Now, obviously, you will consume the trigger quota earlier and reduce the percentage above if you are since you'll be using E and N2C. But it doesn't matter because the absolute damage, like I said, she, that she provides from above trigger quota are still pretty close. Other than the A1 passive, which you can't utilize fully due to the rotation as well. Okay? You simply do the absolute damage earlier, and that's a good thing because we want to deal more damage ASAP. Now, the percentage above is meant to help you appreciate how good her buff trigger quota is against single target. Okay? Now, against multiple targets, Sun Her still does increase your freeze comp damage significantly. Right, because it's still 659k damage that's going to be divided based on the number of enemies, number of instances. So you still clear more waves in your freeze comp, ideally, or mobs that you can't clear in one wave, now you should be able to clear in one. Okay, so let's just look at some of this. Basically, Ayaka's burst damage is multiplied by 2 to 2.5, 2, 2, 2 to 2 point, 2x as opposed to Ganyu, which is 2.5x. So for 10 instances, divide that into 2 ways, you basically deal 2 to 2x more damage when you have Shenhe in your comp, your Ayaka burst damage is going to deal 2 to 2.2 times more immediately Oh sorry, I shouldn't say 2 to 2.2 times more, right? It's 2 to 2.2 times the damage that she originally deals for each enemy in a wave of 5 enemies for each wave, 2 waves For C1 Shenhe it's a lot more instances, so same amount of burst damage, but you can spread across more enemies. And if you have uh, lesser enemies, such that you get more than just one of this per one of the buff damage instance on them, then even better, right? Ventis infusion damage, this portion here has no change from the Shenhe Math Guide tree, so I'm not going to really talk about it, but basically it's 8.5 as damage immediately for 5 enemies, first tick, and then you have your second tick in the next 0.5 second when your Shenhe second E is used so it's a lot of damage boost so all of this, if it's not a huge boost to you I don't know what is, really <laughs> and there's a second wave where you use your second or third Shenhe E, right? or second or third or fourth Shenhe E depending on what rotation and these are all just buffs from Trigger Kota without Trigger Kota, she's still buff 6 to 12% for Ayaka 14 to 26% for Venti although C2 Shenhe is required for this given the rotation even for Venti as well, and I'll cover that in the some points to consider. So yes, I think Shenhe is good in Ayaka Freeze Comp against multiple targets and absolutely incredible in Freeze Comp against single target. And it's a whopping 659k additional damage to Venti and Ayaka combined. From, okay, from Venti and Ayaka combined for a single target. It's really good. And just because her trigger quota are limited, doesn't really necessarily mean she's bad, yeah? After deep diving into a kit and math I share, I hope you can see. Even against multiple targets, just like Gan Yu Freeze Corp, this is the same conclusion. Her trigger quota can provide a substantial boost per wave via the rotation I've shared. For single target, she actually is really good. This is also mainly due to how much she buffs, right? Basically, it's, you think of it this way, she's giving you very high buffs with limited triggers. But it's a huge boost in your DPS in that instant. So why is that bad? Right? If you think that is bad, then Yula's burst is bad as well, right? Similar concept, you, you burst, you suddenly do a huge burst of damage, okay? Although I know Yula is bad loaded, but yeah, let's not go there. So now some points, some final points to consider. C6 Shenhe has a much greater value for Ayaka than Ganyu, given that Ganyu's burst lasts 15 seconds and Ayaka only lasts uh, 5 seconds. So you actually have a chance to utilize the C6 without her burst consuming all the trigger quota. So it's worth getting if you are a valuable-oriented wheel who uses Ayaka as your main, especially considering the 189 to 239% boost that will last throughout until your Ayaka's... Uh, sorry, until the Senhe's Q is ready to start the whole rotation again. And imagine if you have CC Senhe. Wow. But CC Senhe's damage is not that significant because of the 10 second cooldown. And... Just, just bear in mind that one end to C combo alone against a single target uses up your 5 trigger quota. If you have C6, then your unlimited for the NACA for the C6 effect really increases a lot in value for Ayaka compared to Ganyu's charge attack for 2 hits. Okay? It's just a value comparison. C6 Shenhe is going to be much better for Ayaka 
So if you are Ayaka main and not a Ganyu main, CC session her does give you more value. A lot more value. Just because of how their rotations work. And how their kit works as well. Because her N2C is 5 hit, Ganyu's charge attack is 2 hits. C4 Shenhe, however, has a slightly lower DPS boost in Ayaka Freeze Comm. It's about 30 cap hit per rotation since we're running on 10 second interval. As opposed to Gun Freeze Comm, you have 36 per rotation and 15 plus 36 on your second rotation onwards. And But it's still higher than Gun Yu Com. Gun Yu has the lowest uh, trigger because your Gun Yu Com, you are not going to be infusing Cryo, you're going to be infusing Pyro. Oh, in fact, Gun Yu Com only has one Cryo character, that's why. So all of the above here is assuming using two charges of Shenhe in a row stats the trigger quota and doesn't refresh it instead. Okay? Now, the reason why her trigger quota buffs so much percentage-wise is because most cryobers have low to medium multipliers with high number of ticks. I already covered this in Freezecom for Ganyu. Ganyu Freezecom, the MF Guide tree. Now, the decision of whether to go for Shenhe is still the same, whether whether you use the Ganyu Ayaka Math, Ganyu Math video for Shenhe or the Ayaka Freezecom. Since Ganyu Banner and Shenhe Banner are in the same patch, you don't have, if you don't have Ganyu Ayaka, you definitely should go for Ganyu instead of Shenhe. Don't go for Shenhe when you don't have Ganyu Ayaka. Now, if you have Ayaka, Venti, Kokomi, then the decision to go for Shenhe will lie on whether you are comfortable with giving a shield from Leona. Because that's the main thing I see, right? But given that this is a freeze comb that freezes opponents, giving up shield for a significant damage boost is pretty good. This is a very very significant damage boost, so I'll say it's very very good. Offense is the best defense. Now obviously, there are other cryo options other than Diona, and some of them may, be, may give a better battery option than Shenhe, but Shenhe's battery is really not too bad, and I'll talk about it later. So if your Gan Yu and Venti are well built, especially a crit build Venti, Shenhe will be a great choice to boost your Freeze Comp, especially single target. But just bear in mind, even if your Venti is EM, the percentage boost provided by Shenhe buff trigger quota is still the same. It's just that absolute damage wise is lower. Okay? Now, Shenhe's energy generation. Now it looks much better because initially when people say that her energy generation was bad, I was seeing feedback that I was saying that uh, it was one particle on press, two on hold. I don't know whether this was correct, but anyway, that's what you see on the grapevine. So now we saw three and four. If you if you if you check out my latest video, I talk about how Miu Hyo has made her amazing battery. That is where we we'll have the details of that. Now, if you take a step back and say that Miu Hyo showed us the best figure, maybe it's a RNG range of two to three and three to four. It's still good, right? Because this RNG is not a problem. Because most characters have RNG on their energy particle generation as well. Ayaka, Diona, all of them have, have a RNG on their energy generation. How can you say that the R Shenhe having RNG is bad when other characters have it as well? I mean, that's just a unfair comparison. Okay? So 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 is still good, especially if you have C1. Of course, C1 is not exactly F2P territory, but still. Even without C1, you do 2 presses, you have 4 to 6 particles. Still not too bad. Now, Venti's burst duration is 8 seconds, so we may run into risk where the second round of Shenhe's E cannot be utilized by his burst in time. If you look at how the rotation is set up. So in that scenario, right, you can actually switch your Venti and Kokomi order, but if you cast your Kokomi's E first, you have to take some extra caution in Casting your Ventis burst, right? Because you might end up having your Ventis burst being too far from Coco's Mi's E in return due to how his auto targeting works. So I'll test this when Shenhe is out. But I have a feeling that most likely we will have to switch the order. So a bit more effort in trying to get the burst to be correct. The burst, burst location of Venti to be correct. If you cast Venti burst first, it's very easy. You just move your Coco Mi to cast her E right where Venti's burst is. It's just smoother, but both is doable, okay? Both order is doable. Obviously, we want to have uh, Shenhe's second round of E to buff Venti's burst as well. So likely, we have to switch the order, but let's see how that goes when Shenhe is out. So next video, I will do weapon comparison for Shenhe next, and hopefully a constellation comparison as well, if I can make it in time for before Shenhe is released. After all, time is running short here. But... At the minimum, I want to do the weapon comparison so that it helps other players, right? Because not everyone will pull for a Calamity Queller. Okay, so yeah, 
it's a long video. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like the content, remember the video and click subscribe for more. If you have any questions for me, feel free to ask in the comments, but I may not be able to answer every comment. So join me on stream, on Twitch. It's in my description. It's in my about session in my channel as well, the Twitch link. So join me on Twitch and on Twitch, I always answer almost every question if I can. So if you have questions, you can't wait for me to answer. Go to my Twitch stream and you can support me as well. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye.